Hi, Mikiko. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for your time for this interview tonight. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, too. <laughs> I hope you're fine. Yes, I'm, I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. So, well, we have, uh, we have prepared a few questions for you, and mm -hmm. I would just like to get started right away. Awesome, yeah. So, what differences are there from uh, a manga cast per perspective between a small publisher like Pyramond and a big publisher like Tokipop? Um, well, the main difference, of course, is, is budget, because uh, obviously someone like Tokipop has a lot more money to, to be able to support artists and things. Um, but the, there's one major difference that I find... Um, Yeah, it's it's not quite comparable because Tokyo Pop is definitely um, focused more on bringing Japanese titles to to Germany or to wherever, and um, and so supporting local artists is is more kind of uh, on the side in comparison to their main income, which is obviously the licensing, and um, Pyramond or py Pyramond <laughs> Pyramond. Um, um, They uh, they specifically only handle local artists, so they only handle um, you know European artists in general and German artists specifically. So the way they interact with me is completely different because sometimes Tokyo Pop is just too busy. So I've had times where I had to wait to get responses, while with uh, with with Paramount, it's it's fairly easy. It's just you know I just call them or <laughs> they just call me and we just do it in five minutes. We just chat and then it's done. So it's a lot more. Um, it's closer. I, f I feel like it's closer and I have a lot more control over the situation and my my well my creations as well, like my my material. So yeah. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I will continue with the next question. Mm -hmm. um, with Blue, you have already published an art book in 2011. Yes. Could you could you imagine to make another art book sometime? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I actually really have been wanting to make another art book, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it just hasn't worked out entirely up until now because. Uh, I do a lot of client work, so sometimes the illustrations I make, um, I can't use them for these things, or I, I, I've also drawn things for other people of other people's characters, and then I can't really always use everything. Um, so I just never had enough material to make one one art book with, you know, that's sorted by a theme or something, something that I was happy with. But um, if I can... I do want to try to make an art book maybe this year. I don't know, maybe next year. <laughs> But I can't really make any promises because I'm usually so busy that, um, yeah, better better not promise anything. <laughs> okay. But this is something we could just hope for and, and then yes. be happy <laughs> if I'll, it I'll will be best. there. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, on your uh, on your professional page on Facebook, you recently posted some sketches of dragons. Is there um, well? Can we expect a bigger project regarding this? Well, it actually is just um, so my sketchbook is something I just doodle in and draw in when when I feel like I haven't drawn enough in a day. Because um, there's some days where I just have to do business things, you know, like write invoices and emails, and and then I the feel stuff. Yeah, and then I feel a bit dissatisfied that I haven't really drawn anything, and so I just fill my sketchbook with things that just spontaneous things that come to mind and whatever I feel like. And so when I when I drew the dragons, I just felt a bit like you know dragons. Maybe maybe I was thinking of Game of Thrones or something. <laughs> And so um, it really was just a, a spontaneous idea. Um, but uh, I do like dragons, though, and I do love fantasy. So maybe maybe there will be something um, in the future, but I don't really have anything planned uh, specifically with dragons yet. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's fine with me. <laughs> um, you are active on Patreon, and fans can support you there. Yes. What advantages do you see in this platform for you on the one hand and for your supporters on the other hand? 
Well, uh, for me, it has been definitely uh, a life-changing thing. I mean, Patreon is the reason I can still draw comics and, you know, sort of support myself and pay my bills, really. Because um, thanks, well, for those who don't actually know what Patreon is, it's it's uh, it's a it's a platform similar to Kickstarter, but instead of supporting a project that ends and then you just get the reward it's a it's a continuous thing that goes um monthly in my case where um people can can pledge a small amount like a dollar or two dollars or three dollars and they get small things back in return and they support me as an artist every month um so that i can pretty much just keep drawing and posting comics and drawing little things you know and um it it it, the the big thing that has changed is I used to have to take every job that came along. So it was very stressful and I had to do a lot of unpleasant things. And it's just, it's it's the kind of stuff people complain. It's like they have their, their um, soul-crushing jobs that they hate <laughs> just to pay the bills. And then when they come home, they can finally draw. In my case, it's finally gotten to a point where I can personally just pick and choose what I want to do and I generally pick obviously I pick jobs that are things that I enjoy which I can show off and that I can promote and that I can be proud of and um and it's amazing it's really amazing um so I had actually been very close to quitting comics simply because of the financial factor before and thanks to Patreon I have not and now I actually have uh uh a web comic series, which is the mini comics that is updating regularly. I still do um, illustrations. I still do game art. I still I still publish comics. So it's pretty much kind of living the dream now. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Pedrin really gives you some kind of um, financial flexibility um, and freedom. Yes, it does. And it's it's not just me sitting there and sort of taking donations though because it is I give back just as much mm -hmm. as people give me so um, depending on how much you pledge you get things back so for example something very simple is uh, from three dollars they everybody can read um, my, uh, my my Monday blog so every week once on Mondays I actually write <laughs> about my last week and so I have photos in there of my cat of myself of my drawings you know and then little doodles and then I talk about my private life a little bit because my private life is you know I don't really want to have that in public for everyone to see so I say like this is a little little side of me that only my my uh patrons can actually see and um I also just talk with them a lot so there's a lot of going on in comments so if people just ask me a question I'm much more likely to reply there because it's not you know I don't get overrun like I do in other websites and um so and and then for example if you go to the to to the higher tier ones I have uh stream lessons I have just just hangout streams where you just hang out with me and I play guitar <laughs> or um I also offer commissions and um And the top tier currently is a one-on-one -on -one Skype session where I give very, very specific artist, like artist advice to people. So they tell me exactly what, what they want to become in terms of art, how they want to improve. And I pointedly sort of give them advice for that and give them specific tools, give them critique and homework as well. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's... It's really fun and it's it's insane to think, but I've actually, I feel like there's a, a very close connection I have with the people who support me because um, it's odd, but it's true. It's, it's a very personal experience, I think, and uh, uh, I'm very fond of, of the people who support me. So, yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds cool. Um, you already mentioned your um, um, your comic strips. Mm -hmm. which you um, post. Yes. So um, which kind of stories um, do, you, do you tell in them and how do you decide which situations from your, from your life you would put in such a comic strip? Okay, so all of the comic strips, I sometimes get people asking me, like, did this actually happen? <laughs> so all of the comic strips have actually happened 
in that form or in a similar form. So sometimes I take some artistic liberties, but for the most part, it is exactly how it happened. Um, and so it's it's a slice of life comic, right? And it's a slice of my life comic. <laughs> and um, I pretty much just, I just pick really simple situations that people can relate to, I think. Um, it's very important to me that it's simple because I want people to say, oh, I've had that before, or I know this, or mm. they just recognize themselves in situations. Um, and it's kind of, it's so it's very lighthearted. And I, I have, I don't know, I, I just have moments where something happens and we, like my friends and I would just laugh and then I'm just sitting there going, hmm, that could work. <laughs> and then I just write it down. And so I have, I have like this huge, document full of ideas that I have and things that I could maybe make into a comic and since I update uh bi-weekly um I have set like fixed days where I actually draw these and so when I sit down to actually draw them I just look at my list and then just pick one that I feel like drawing in the moment because uh I'd never want it to feel forced because it comes across insincere so I, I try to pick something that's fun that I feel like doing now and then it'll translate really well. So, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so how personal or um, emotional do you also get in your comic strips? Well, you, you already said that it's a, a slice of your life. Mm -hmm. But yeah, how much personal stuff do we get to see? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, sometimes it gets really emotional I've, I've had one or two that were quite mm, well one of them got people a bit teary-eyed I think because it was uh, about to break up and um, people were really really sort of fans of you know us as a couple and then that didn't work out and then it was a breakup comic and a lot of people were very sad about it but um, it was um, I don't know it 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 was important to me, though, to keep it lighthearted at the end. So the message at the end was, it's okay. I've got my fans. I've got my friends. I've got my family. Everybody's around here. I'm going to be okay. So the, so I like to have like an uplifting message, even if it gets a bit sad sometimes, or melancholy. You know, it's okay to be a bit melancholy. But um, the mini comics have been um, kind of a like a pick me up for a lot of people who read them. So I never want it to be sad. But in terms of like how emotional I get when drawing them, um, early on it was really difficult because a lot of people post comments um, that I couldn't agree with or there were sometimes you get nasty comments or trolls or whatever. And since that seriously is just me, it's the drawing of me doing things that I actually did. It, it's very hard to take a step back and say, well, whatever, you know. Mm. So, but I've learned over time because it's just, you just have to, or you just stop drawing, I think. So nowadays I can take a step back and just say, okay, well, people just see themselves in it. They recognize the situation. They say, well, that's me or whatever. And they don't think about me who made them or that it maybe is a person. So when they say nasty things, they don't think that there's a person behind it. So yeah, it's it's gotten easier, but it's it's still yeah. I don't let random people do various things with my comics, for example, because it is is very personal. So when people want to modify my comics or you know okay, yeah. stuff like that, it's not that nice. <laughs> of course. So, Yeah. And I hope such uh, such negative comment uh, such negative commentaries are the minority. I think they're not yes. the usual yeah. reaction. So, oh. <laughs> how do most of the people react to to your comic um, strips? Yeah, the most common reaction I get is "Me too." That's so me. And um, oh, I had that too. Or my sister did the same thing. Or I'm like that. So a lot of people say that. They, they just see themselves and they just tell me that that is exactly what they thought or exactly the same thing they do. And uh, I think that's really cool because it connects everyone. And that's exactly the reason why the comics are kept simple so that mm. um, everyone can kind of recognize just a human aspect of them. 
that unifies like makes us all oh it just sounds so oh, yeah. world peace <laughs> and Mickey feels just like me she has yeah 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 the um, usual problems and <laughs> everybody has the same struggles to a degree I think so that's great um but the second most common thing I get which is the more fun one actually is um, people tell me their stories so sometimes it's it's kind of like a continuation of the oh I had that happen reaction the second part is but it was like this and then they tell me their story and then their variation of the same situation and sometimes the stories are so funny that I just I just spend I actually do read all of the comments I get on my mini comics because I just enjoy them so much so so I post them and I sit down and I'm I refresh the page so that I can read funny stories that people tell me of themselves that happened and um and that's just it's just great I just love it there's a there's a real exchange going on in the comment section sometimes that people talk to each other as well not just at me and uh that's my favorite part actually <laughs> yeah um, also, from your comic strips, um, one could learn that you don't have a fear of spiders. So, <laughs> is there anything else probably you're, you're afraid of? Um, well, I don't think I have anything in particular. I, I'm not very... So, heights is something I'm not very fond of. So, going very high places where there's, like, no security, sort of, like, no barriers or something that makes me very nervous but I'll, I don't hmm, I can still do it like I, I would go on very high towers and things I've gone to Tokyo Sky Tree which is super high and they've got like a glass floor so I've been on there I wasn't very happy about it but <laughs> I was standing on it I was like oh, well I'm, I'm here now so I might as well I so my head says I know it's safe But I'm like, well, oh, this is not fun. This is not fun. So, <laughs> so I guess heights is probably something I'm not not so comfortable with. But I don't know. Not not a real phobia, really. I don't think I have any phobias. So maybe I'm lucky. Maybe yeah, it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah, maybe I just haven't found it yet, though. Maybe I'm really scared of, I don't know, uh, something really silly like fluffy animals or <laughs> I actually love fluffy animals <laughs> who yeah. wouldn't <laughs> yeah okay so um, you do not only draw mangas but you are also a game artist um, in which games could we admire your designs uh, well uh, the difficult part about being a game artist is that um, there's this misconception that if I draw for a game that the game is going to look like my art <laughs> uh, which is not the case because if you're a game artist you have to do pretty much everything that most of the time is not even seen in the end product sometimes so like user interface sometimes I had to do little icons for a game once and I don't know nobody knows the game <laughs> it's completely unknown and Oh, you know, and some games never get released. So I've done a, a fair share, but I don't really have anything that's really new or where I can point out and say, well, that's what I did. Except though I did draw, um, which was a really big deal for me, by the way. <laughs> uh, I did draw a cover for Nintendo. I think it was last year. Um, so the, the, it was a Nintendo 3DS game called uh, Fossil Fighters Frontier. And it's like a kid's game. With dinosaurs and stuff it was really <laughs> fun because I love dinosaurs <laughs> they're great yeah and so I did the cover illustration and um yeah so but I didn't design the characters because it's a it's an established franchise it's an est established uh, series and it was just um it was new in Europe and so I had to draw a new cover for the release in Europe yeah so but um would one still recognize your style from this or um I think to a degree maybe I had to I had to I have had quite some strict guidelines for that one so I I had to send it back a lot and fix things mm. a lot because they had very very strict rules about how everything looks and what color everything is and how I place things and how many dinosaurs are visible and things like that so um I'm not really sure if you can still see my style in it, but I did have people point out that they saw it in a shop and they 
they thought they kind of felt it it looked familiar and then they later on found out it was mine so maybe there's a you know a hint of it still there <laughs> okay cool <laughs> yeah so um i would just like to get back um with one question on patreon mm -hmm. so for your supporters there you offer live streams and tutorials yes um, following which criteria do you choose your topics for those live streams? Well, I mainly actually try to, um, uh, I try to start, like, um, right now, since I've only started offering these in January, that's the first time I actually had the first lesson, um, I'm, I'm kind of starting very small. So I'm, I'm trying with the basics and things and sort of building up on top of it. So right now we're at, the next stream is going to be just face anatomy, like head anatomy. Um, but I actually sat down and I, I did a little questionnaire with my students. So I asked everybody how old they were, how serious they are with drawing, what their goals are, what their difficulties are. And then I kind of gauge vaguely what's useful for everybody. So someone to get into comics, someone to just brush up on their skills and others just want to be going towards like really serious things like concept art. And so I pick themes and topics that cover everybody equally. And I try to have um, advice that's useful for beginners as well as advanced and intermediate people, because um, otherwise, you know, it's really boring for the people who are really much better already. So I try to just have a little bit of everything in there so that even someone who's already been drawing for a long time can join the stream and learn something from it or at least feel motivated and, and sort of just um, enjoy the learning together experience because that's kind of what I try to focus mm. on that I'm also not perfect and I think that I can learn from my students just as much and so we kind of grow together yeah so that's that's the goal and Another thing I do is I let my students tell me um, what they'd like to see more of and what they struggle mm -hmm. with so that I can kind of, um, yeah, just cater to their needs specifically so they can make requests as well. Yeah. Okay, so um, are there certain problems that nearly every beginner drawer has to deal with and that you are, off and that you are asked very often advice for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's a couple that... Um, come up again and again but one that comes up most that is most um, troubling to me is that I get asked so often um, how to develop your style and it, it actually bothers me a lot because it's often young people who ask this and so they think that they have to pick a style and then start drawing <laughs> in it and the problem is that style doesn't work that way first of all and it's actually not really good for for learning to draw because you're too fixated on drawing in a specific way so um style just happens if you if you draw a lot of things and you have a lot of influences over a long time you just start picking and choosing strokes and lines and making things in your characteristic way that in the end a style develops over time um, but picking one is just this phenomenon that goes around right now. It's just young people want to be popular. They want to be famous. They want to be, they want to have loads of Facebook likes and therefore they just look at popular people and they go, oh my God, that style is so awesome. But then this other person also is famous and is also awesome, but has a different style. <laughs> What style do I pick? Right. And that's not how it works. <laughs> so I try to tell people don't, don't focus on style. Just forget style, draw a lot learn how to draw well first and then eventually someone is going to say oh I saw your your art somewhere and I recognized it from your style because that's ha what happened with me I just didn't know I had a style until people I started going um I started uh, having my art uh featured on front pages of things mm -hmm. and people came to me and said I recognized your style on the front page and I didn't know I was on the front page <laughs> So, so that's kind of when I realized, oh, I guess I have a style, right? And it was one of the last things I was thinking about. <laughs> so 
my my biggest advice for young people and beginners especially and people who know the um a lot of people know the theory but don't have the practice is my advice is practice <laughs> so it's kind of lame because people always expect some trick or shortcut or something but that seriously is the only thing that will get you um going is draw every day draw every day if you're serious about art you have to draw every day even if it's just a stick figure get a sketchbook draw something every day and it's it's just that the um what's it called the eye to hand eye to hand coordination yeah. i think is the thing that frustrates most people because they have like these amazing things in their heads right but their hand just doesn't do what they want it to do and yeah, the I know that. way <laughs> Yeah, but the only way to get over this is to draw so much that you your hand becomes your tool. So it's no longer like you're holding a pencil and it's kind of awkward in your hand and it just won't do the line you imagine it to do. And at some point, if you just draw hundreds and hundreds of sketches over, I don't know, a couple of years, eventually it'll be natural. And that's what you want to get. You want to be natural. And then you can start with you know more advanced things like I don't know theory color theory and <laughs> all the complicated things composition and all that you know so so just practicing is the thing because because people really want to be able to sit down draw a perfect drawing and upload it and that's never how it's going to be you have to work hard and the only way to to get nice drawings is to get all the bad drawings out first <laughs> <laughs> i think you just uh, you already said it is that one has to be really sincere about it and yeah yeah have um, and has to be into it yes yes but it it also practices discipline which is very important actually because a lot of people ask me what motivates me and the thing is nothing motivates me i just sit down and draw i'm disciplined <laughs> right because it's a motivation is something that comes from outside and discipline is something that comes from inside and you have to be disciplined in this business you know so you don't just sit and wait for something to happen because that's what motivation is so, yeah yeah okay so um <laughs> is there anything that we can expect from you um in the future regarding projects Ooh, well, um, I do have a couple of things planned, but I don't think I'm allowed to talk about them yet. <laughs> so, well, I can I can definitely say there's a lot going on. I'm, I never really stand still because I'm a workaholic and I just don't like not doing anything. So um, things are coming, things are coming, but I, I don't think I can say what exactly. There will be a, a comic related thing coming this year. I just can't really say when and what it's about <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> but something we um we might be able to look forward to this year <laughs> yeah definitely this year yes okay great <laughs> yeah yeah so um i think we've reached the end of the interview and okay. i thank you very much for your time yeah thanks too it was really fun <laughs> yeah it was a pleasure all right bye have a nice uh, evening <laughs> <laughs> you too bye bye <laughs>